Hey everyone and welcome back to Across the Neuro Divide, the podcast where myself and Tigger Pritchard talk about the differences between neurodiversity and neurotypicalness. <laughs> and we combine <laughs> the two. L- Love the words. Either side. So uh, basically that's what we do. As I say, welcome back to Across the Neuro Divide. Before we do go on, go hit like, hit subscribe, ring the bell, and you'll always know when we've got new content. The other thing is, it really helps. If you just chuck in a comment, hit that like. It puts this out to more people, and more people can get to hear it. And really what we feel is the important message that we're sending out there. Tigger, my man, how are you this episode? I I am am surprisingly fine. I have my shorts on, even though, like you, it's, it's raining a bit outside, but I'm embracing the summer. My winter gear has gone away. You know, um, I, got, you know I, wear, I wear shorts year-round. Well, I, I used to. It was one of, my, one of my trademarks at college. I'd still wear them. And then when I, I just – anyway, I just stopped one year. I go through phases with clothes, and I just thought, no, that's it. Stop wearing them. You're a lecturer in the middle of a college, and it's like December, and you've got shorts on, and it's not right. <laughs> and I just changed. And then started wearing black jeans as it was in those days, all those years ago. All that I remember, the I used to be, I was known as the man in black. <laughs> oh, I used <laughs> I to, was, I, I used to, uh, one student turned around to me one day and said, are you going to a funeral? And I went, no. <laughs> and they went, well, and I went, and it was, it was, um, I can, t- I can look at my, my, yeah, my wonderful alty brain. Yeah. I can tell you it was a Marks and Spencer's quick dry cotton black shirt. Uh, Peter Storm, quick dry, lived on my own, quick dry t-shirt. It was black cords from TK Maxx. It was Converse, always Converse. And then a jacket, which is usually dark in colour, maybe with a stripe pattern. So, yeah, I look like I look like the man in black. And I, wore, and I wore that as my uniform for years, and I could not. It's only <clears throat> it's only very recently, I go through phases, but for years, I couldn't, if, it, if it wasn't a black, if somebody bought me a present, it was like a white t-shirt, forget it. Now I've started branching out. I think I have said, I think I've got, between the two houses, I think I've got maybe 30 T-shirts, all from Sainsbury's, all medium, all cotton. But, you know, um, <laughs> at least I've branched out in colours, well, which hey, is yeah, good, yeah. It. Well, you see, I, th- I think everybody has these little quirks sometimes, I, whether, regardless of a neurotype. I, I've always, I mean, I, back in back in high school and my early 20s, you know, up to a little, probably mm, close to mid-20s, I was, it was a Def Leppard T-shirt. I was such a massive Whoa. Def Leppard fan. I had as many T-shirts as you've got. I had that many Def Leppard T-shirts. <coughs> <laughs> and it was always just check on the T-shirt. Gosh. Obviously, I had to. I was in an office job, so I had to uh, wear shirts and ties and stuff during the, the day. But I, I find it now that I don't have to wear office stuff, I, I, I still go the same way. I, I tend to wear a T-shirt like it. It's always a sort of character T-shirt or a band T-shirt, something like that. And I wear my three-quarter shorts, and I've got a few pairs of them, and I just rotate through. And that's what I find comfortable. And it, I'm neurotypical, and you can start to, it, look it is, it, and start to see it, neurodivergence in everything, but I'm not. I'm it, 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 you do, don't you? It is, yeah. finding, it is finding what's comfortable. There. That's really important, and I, and I do think that's, that is really Steve important. Steve Jobs Fashion trends. Steve Jobs Never does liked. it. They all had the same outfit. They just yeah. do it because one yeah. of those things to worry about. <clears throat> Basically the same thing. Chuck it on every day and off they go. They don't have to think yeah. about it or pre-prepare for it. But yeah, I can it remember having sense. to change a T-shirt once, and, and this is a true story. Don't tell college. I'm back there working a bit, but don't tell them. I thought, oh, I, I think I bought a white T-shirt for a, a white shirt do or something, and none of my T-shirts are dry for whatever reasons. I'd forgotten whatever. And I thought, oh, my God, the only thing I've got clean is a white T-shirt. So I put it on, went to stand by the bus to go to college. Could not stand it. Got stressed, got anxious. Wasn't the norm. Ran back into the flat that I was living in in Truro. Oh, God, I've given the college away. Rang the college and went, oh, no, something's <laughs> happened. I'm, I'm going to be late this morning. And I washed and dried a black T-shirt for the other way to college. <laughs> That's true. Uh, if, if, oh. if my old boss listens to these, I am, I am deep in trouble there. Uh, well, I think yeah, there's got to be a statute of limitations on that, surely. <laughs> it comes to a point. You've, you've done enough. It's, Look, yeah. I know. We, we, we better do, before I forget, we better do a health update. Because that yes. went out. Um, I'm under what they call, is it is it active after active supervision i think they call it it just means that those of you that watched before there's a a cuthbert appeared a little lump on my kidney and um they're just going to scan me regularly for up to five years and the minute they see it grow they're in so this is to me this is kind of like the best case scenario is it's nothing uh the second best case scenario it's a cyst so it's there already so it's going to be a cyst or not a cyst and then this case scenario that i love love the dominoes with this one it's we'll check you We'll check you regularly. If it changes, we're straight in. It's really early days. So that is fab. 
it was a long way, I have to say. It was a yeah. long period of time. We did the other, um, you know, my strategies where I dealt with it and stuff that weren't maybe the same strategies as my family liked. It, it's it's a result that I you just cope with. And, you know, it, it, it's changing my viewpoints on a lot of things, I must confess. You you know there's something there. Yeah. But, you know, every, I think it's every three or four months, I go up to Derryford, great hospital, great hospital. And then just boom, and they check me and the rest is history. So... For those that sent messages and so on, thank you so much. That mentioned stuff, thank you so much. But yeah, and that's that's a a really good position to be in because it means yeah. it's very early days, which is which is important and lush. It strikes me that through this, to be honest, the the, the autistic mind being a benefit because you you know your needs and your routines with this kind of stuff. You've gone through a number of things you need to know, and you seem remarkably calm and collected about it, and and quite rational in your thought process. And I think that's because you've gone through that process knowing what you need to do to make sure you're okay yeah, and then it's, that- it's i think I, I kept calling them my dominoes if i don't know what my dominoes are yep. then i had really bad times there's one time when they sent me a, a letter and they said they're scanning my thorax as well as my my abdomen area and so on yep. and i thought why are they scanning my thorax i couldn't speak to anybody and i thought they're only scanning that in case they think it's spread and that really threw me and i had a really bad week then yep. until i managed to get in touch with somebody i've, I've, you, I've got i've got more, i've got the phone numbers the consults and everything at, at dover don't ask me for them i just rang <laughs> I, I i i spoke to people i groveled okay you know i said hey i'm reading this because and they i have to say they're fantastic they, they said we don't normally do this but listen here's so and so secretary speak to them yep no i'll get him to give you a ring get her to give you a ring it was fantastic they really put they really listened to me saying i need this otherwise i'm very very anxious and very very stressed and what a difference that makes hey? that oh it's beautiful it is beautiful so i'm really lucky really lucky that uh i'm there and um will update, you know, but next five years of my life, that would be freaky. I think the, the bit that hit me is every time I have to go for a scan. That's the bit when you get in certain, I love the scans. It's like going into Star Trek. I love it. <laughs> it's state of the art. It, it's such good fun. I'm there as a geek. There's one where they've got um, 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 the seven sisters, the Pleiades up are on the ceiling. So kids right. can be distracted by stars. I'm an amateur astronomer kind of. I'm like, oh my God, I'm distracted by stars. And I'm off, and I'm loving it. I, I just love it. I just think it's, and then this is the bit I would get excited about going, of course. And yeah. my partner would be like, not excited. I was going because yeah, yeah. the next bit could be, we're going to find out with the bad news. I'm going, oh, but this bit's really cool. I really love it. Yeah. That's, I know. I love that. I think that's a great thing. And, and uh, being able to do that and, and know your coping mechanisms and your strategies. And I think, you know, you come out, you're a lot better in yourself than most people I, I know who sort of have gone through similar and, and, and where it comes from. And it's, Something that's touched my life quite a bit at the moment. There seems to be I've uh, lost a couple of friends recently for different reasons, not all cancer yeah. related. You know, we got I've got some family members who are struggling with it, and uh, a good oh, real mentor to me back in Australia uh, recently passed away from cancer as well. It's one of those things that just keeps hitting, and you it, the it way people process it is so <clears throat> different. It, it isn't. It? It's you know we all hate the big C, we all hate the word. I think there's a, a lot. I mean. You, you and I, we've both been touching on lots of families that have, regrettably. Mm. And it is just, um, you know, I've, I've full respect for the the charities that are out there, you know, funding research. I'm doing an event in, a, in about a month or so down in Cornwall where they're doing a 24-hour event. And I'm, I'm, I'm doing the MC, but introducing the bands. Never done that before in my life, but it should be fun. <laughs> so I'll be doing that later on. And, it, and, and, and I was doing that before I knew about Cuthbert, so to speak. Yeah. Now that Cuthbert's come along, wow, do I really want to do it? Do you know what I mean? It's going yeah, to be absolutely. personal as well as something I wanted to give. So, no, the, the fact that it's so, you know, it's so relevant. And I've lost My mother died of pancreatic cancer during the pandemic. And, and you know, the, things like that don't leave you, do they? They never will. No. Do you know what I mean? It's just like, ah. And I know so many other friends that have been through the same kind of angst really so no you know we'll get the research keep fighting and and see what see what comes there all of us sending you the, the best of good wishes mate and, and uh, yeah, we've got I'm to meet the hug at them. some point we, i've got to get up to where you live i've got to get up to where you live it's a bit it's funny bird. here because i've got all these people i know now really quite well i chris yeah. who i do the grumpy gets with and adam and and simon we only we've only met physically once we, was really, and I had met. We, we've been doing Grumpy Dads for a, a year before wow. that, before I even physically met him. And it's the same with you. We've done all this stuff together, but yeah, I've never yeah, actually yeah. It's weird, out. isn't it? It's like yeah. it's, you could be, you could, you could be in Australia, but you're not. You're literally just up the road. So I will sort this out this year. We're, we're I promise. Do it. I we're will gonna, sort this out this year. 
We talk about it almost every episode. It's going to happen, people. I know, we will be I in know. the same room for an episode. You when, it, when it does, we'll film it like mad. Yeah, exactly. I wanted to talk to you. I, 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 something that's really hit me over the last... We were talking about it on the... We always have a pre-chat, you know, where you're catching up before we hit record. We were talking about the fact that so many people... So this came about because we were talking about the PDA Society are doing a lot of fundraising at the moment. It's PDA Day on the 15th of Yay. May. I, I know that Tig is doing a lot. I'm going to be speaking at the Celebrate PDA Summit, which is going to be held on Clubhouse. We'll put all links to all of these things in the description. I, I've just found Clubhouse. Out. I love Clubhouse. It is so cool. That <laughs> that 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 um uh, that PDA Clubhouse is gorgeous. Mm. Um, I love it. I love it, and it, it's really weird. I've, I've literally just found it. Sorry, getting excited, going off track. I it's cool, but it is really cool. It's it's like this radio thing, isn't it? It and is. You can dip I, in I and out. It's. I've it's got fun. so much going on with everything else. I haven't had time to really get my feet into Clubhouse, but this is a good excuse. And I got shown through it because it's actually really simple. It's, one of those, it, it's typical. Yeah. That it's actually quite self-explanatory once you're on there. But I kind of had that nervous, I don't know it, I, and I'm supposed to be doing this talk on it, so you know, what's it going to be? But that's going to be happening. All those links will be in the description. But one thing that's come about from that is we're talking about the fact that actually the money being raised is really low. And the, the obvious reason for that, is that people are hanging on to every penny they've got at the moment because cost mm. of living has gone up so much. And I know for me, I, you know, as I say, and you're a typical one, I'm still in there like, worrying about what's next. How am I going to make sure, you know, we turned off hot water and things like that, just ways we can cut back that are actually going to, you know, have an impact and, and, and help us to get through this situation. But it strikes me as something that certainly for a lot of the more, for the neurodivergent minds, in my life, the people who, who are neurodivergent, it takes on a bigger thing. It's not just about, you know, you've got family, you've got your health, you've got, you know, heating or reading basically taking place. But, I mean, is, is it something you've had to cope with? And so how have you dealt with it? First of all, the, the, I just worked out, I got the maths out. I don't do maths. I mean, I, I actually I don't think I haven't got any mathematical qualifications from school. I shouldn't mention that to college either. And so I... I just worked stuff out. I worked out that oil heaters were more cost effective than, than I live in a flat storage heater. So I turned them off about a year and a half ago. I made sure everything learned your light bulbs. I do that. I, I've even, you know, I've even insulated pipes running from the water tank to the, to the taps anywhere I could. I mean, I've even taken the side of the, I live in a flat. I took the side of the bath panel off, I insulated the, the pipes under there. I think the landlord loves me. I do all mm. stuff like that, insulated windows, curtains. I do all of that same energy. I am Mr. Energy efficient. I love it. But then this hits. Yeah. And you think, wow, okay. And you, I think, I think partially my brain had realized, you know, I was, I was chatting to my father and he was saying, oh, you know, we used to wash everything by hand. And if it was, it was on a line or it was drying in front of the fire. And I'm thinking, well, we've lost all those days. We become very self reliant upon tumble dryers and washing machines and all the yes. rest of it. But some families desperately need those tumble dryers and washing well, machines. Well, I can tell need- you, we're in that position. Yeah, yeah. For my daughter, she can't cope. Exactly. If, if something comes out, it's mildly damp. We, you know, I, 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 I went through a whole load of stuff. One of the things I've done is I bought some um, smart PowerPoint, you know, the smart plugs, basically. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what I worked out was that, yes, they use a little bit of electricity, but the amount of things that we had that were just plugged in and would just sit there. It seems like turning off the microwave. We just do out the switch. Vamp- vampires, aren't they called? Cool. Vampire, vampire devices? Vampire devices. One yeah. of them, like the PlayStation, my son has his PS4 and he loves it. But it sits there on all the time, so he can just pop on. What I've managed to do is set up timers on that. But also, you know, so when he's at school now, it's off, and it shuts off automatically. But if, it, if he was home for a day, I can just easily click it back on. And it seems like this, my, my studio, I can remote power to this now, mm. so I can just turn it off completely uh, and know that you know, that's taken care of because the plug for it's in a weird space in the house. And, you know, it's, it's those little things, and that made a big difference. I, I like that, you know, there's all these things that oh, I like doing it worked out it's been cool it's, it's been really <coughs> cool to sort of look at the the, the usage chart and see how we've well, I've got a, things, but have you got a smart meter i've got a smart meter we do have a smart some, meter, yeah. some they're bad i love mine i'm checking it out i, I even went around turning appliances on off when i first got it to see how much they use so i was interested and to see what's what's you know but but it, it's i mean you know i look at it from a from a you know an autistic perspective and i think of playstations i think of people individuals with their routines and their needs and their media needs their technology needs if, if somebody needs a device in order you know as part of their their, their daily routine 
and you know you have to turn it on again and it has to reboot that can add to somebody's level of anxiety you've got you know you've got people that use lights people that use sound music in terms of you know self-regulation and so on and so forth you've got people you know i mean we're both on parent forms loads of individuals that need assistive aids around the house and the electricity that they use and they're worried about not being able to have those in the winter or you know will heating come first will food come first and and i you know and i you know a lot, a lot of my routines, I must confess, are linked to, and I can't say the name because there's one in this room. Oh, in the other room, it's called computer. That's okay. Hmm. I've got, you know, a computer, yeah. And I, and I have a soundtrack in the morning. I play. Spot the it, Freggy. <laughs> I know, yeah, sorry. Well, so this one's called what it's called, but the one in the other room is called. And um, I did it once. And it, it fired up during a, a, a Zoom thing. I was like, no, no, sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to say it. But uh, for me... So getting up one of the days I start my routine in the morning and now I'm doing the steps on my climbing machine for, for the PDA Sarty, the awesome PDA Sarty. And so I start off that morning. It's my first domino that falls. And when I'm not here, when I'm at my partner's, that doesn't happen. And there's there's a slight difference in anxiety. Obviously, I'm at my partner's, it's great. I have other things in place to regulate to make sure I'm okay as best I can. But here, very much so, in my environment here, that is a domino that falls. So many people use electronic devices visual aids so on and so forth as part of their you know way of of stimming and, and other you know self-regulatory stuff yeah. around their houses if you then there's other things as simple as I mean, electricity people it's, with it's CPAP terrible. machines you know people who've got yeah, exactly CPAP and stuff like that you've got to have the machine that has to run all night and i mean even during the summer people you know i don't know about you i need a fan at night or i'm not going to sleep because it just gets so stuffy and and, and you know i, I need yeah. to a lot of sensory oh, issues are, you know. Uh, we, we don't realise just how much we rely on electricity with so many things. I've seen on the forums where, you know, I've seen individuals who've need, who need, who who have more, uh, you know, assistive technology for, let's say, their children in the house. And they have written on forums, I don't know what I'm going to do in the winter mm. because I know we can't heat the place. I know, uh, and these are people that have already joined food banks. Both parents have got jobs, so to speak. Yeah. And they've joined food banks and they're petrified. And, you know, I know the whole country's in the same problem, some more than others, but I do so, so reach out and think about the families out there that have a lot of assistive aids, that have children with, with you know, awesome sensory requirements and so on. Yeah. And they're worried about their bill, the electricity yeah. bill. And that's, that's scary. And people are writing it now. I read one the other night about uh, they have a, a, a hoist and some other stuff for their child. And they were talking about the fact that, you know, have to recharge batteries overnight and so on. And they went, we are really, really worried about the winter. Because at this point, you know, they, they were saying that I think they as parents had cut down their meals to two a day. Wow. To save money. And this is the 21st century. And you but think, this is, wow. Not only that, this is 21st century Britain. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not like we're a developing country. This stuff, you know, I, I understand there's, you know, Lots to take into consideration, but I don't think the government are doing nearly enough. And I, I, I seem to be going on about politics a lot at the moment with different things. I've never been someone who gets too political because I think it's such a personal thing. But I really feel, you know, in amongst all this, and, I, and I'm going to throw it in there more as a throwaway comment, but to, to consider suddenly we've got to do voter ID, which means a lot of disabled people have suddenly got to exactly. find a way to get, pay money to get ID so that they can vote. It's, the, yeah. the, the whole thing is so rigged against particularly people with disabilities and hidden disabilities at the moment, is just wrong. To me, it's, it's, it's a reinforcement of that ableist you know, narrative exactly, again within our, within our exactly culture. Exactly that. I was, I was trying to think of a term the other day, and I think the term I'm going to use is neural conversion therapy. And I was looking at what they're doing in schools with regards to taking children out and giving them eye contact lessons and stuff like that. Oh, and so whole ABA You've stuff. also got... I know, I know. You've got the other stuff where, you know, where there's a, a you know a, a percentage of our awesome society are being forced yeah you know the money the aspect the electricity the the id based stuff it's 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 it is really funny and like you i'm not political but i think i am if that makes That's sense what I'm getting I'm to, it's like I clearly i i, but I, I think yeah. i think we are that everyone's got their political stance i think the difference is is something is it something you generally talk about or is it something that you kind of 
what is it, sex, politics, and religion are sort of taboo subjects, and you really shouldn't go down there because you're going to offend someone. Well, we, we've but, got we've got families out there. You know, both you and I are on on on. You know, we run parent groups, we support parent groups. Yeah, there are people talking on those groups. They are scared. They are, really they are scared. scared of what's going to happen later on this year. They are scared when the next price hike comes through. They are scared that their wages aren't keeping up with their bills. They are scared of how they're going to feed their kids. What, what if somebody needs, you know, needs a, um, you know, uh, that sensory equipment replacing, a, 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 you know, a weighted blanket replacing, or, you know, a lighting system that helps them self-regulate in the room, and the list goes on, and they can't do it. That's it. Because the cost of everything is going up. And this is, this is, is utterly wrong. Utterly, utterly wrong. Totally. Totally wrong. Look, if you are struggling and you're, you're looking for support, do head to places, places like the Citizens Advice Bureau. Mm. They actually have access to a lot of grants and a lot of support that you might be able to use and you are entitled to. Don't feel bad about that. You know, you don't feel that pressure and guilt. You're entitled to that and it's there for a reason. So just do do that. Places like Food Banks, if you are struggling for food, yeah, head there. There's a... There's um, one of the pages I run down in Cornwall. There's um, an awful lot of local charities, mm. <clears throat> local areas that they're not calling them food banks as such, but you pay a, a, a yearly fee and then you get to buy like a basket of food for like, I don't know, six or seven or eight pounds. Yeah. And, you know, the stuff in there is 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 great. Well, it might be less than that. But I've been sharing those pages recently mm. and I'm hearing people that are joining them because it's, you know, it's food that's, I think it's food that's just out of date and so yeah. on. And so many people, so many more people I know in jobs are going to that because they've got to feed their families. You, if you've got, you, you know what it's like, you know, kids need to eat. And honestly, this past week, I have seen, I know. I, uh, and what, what if that child's got, got, you know, sensory issues around food as well? We, could, we really got to be careful because I think we could get really emotive because I'm can. now rubbing and my hands. Yeah. This is um, it. And it, it triggers it in me and I, I get really, I feel passionate because it, it affects us. But I see how many other people it's affecting and the people it's really, really having an effect in their daily lives. Do get support. Do chase those things up. We'll put a bunch of links in the description to places that you can go. Uh, <laughs> if you are really struggling, but uh, something lighter, I think. And I was just admiring your chair. Oh well, do you want the story about the chair? Go on. Obviously, I well, I was I ha- I brought a beautiful vintage chair, which is like so gorgeous, yeah. so gorgeous, so gorgeous. Nineteen seventies, like uh, orange PVC wooden arms, particular brand, and it and it swivels and it's lovely. But when you sit on it all day long, your bottom hurts. And your back <laughs> oh, I hate that. <laughs> right? Yeah. I even got one of those special cushions. Ah, didn't work. Right. And I thought, oh no. Okay. So I researched. I researched. Because like you, I, I sit here a lot and I have to have timers going off to remind me to get up and go out and do my steps and stuff like that. So I researched, and this is uh I think it's endorsed by the British Medical Association. I, I'm gonna tell you how much it costs as well. Wow, okay. um so i researched <laughs> talking of cost of living crisis <laughs> i know yeah this is this is this is this is part of my birthday present several years ago okay before the pandemic actually three years ago and um i researched the kind of chair you should have it's got it, it goes up and down it goes side to side it's got the neck thing it's got a, a lumbar thing the the chair moves forward and back you you fit it and, and you know i love doing this bit i'm a bit close to the can i can just i can just relax in it and everything <laughs> it's, it's just so cool that I, and where you sit there's different bits in it you can inflate and all the rest of it oh, brand wow. new i think these are about 800 to a thousand pounds <gasps> yeah i know and I found this. Somebody was selling this on eBay for ages at like four hundred pounds. And I just messaged them. I think and I said, "Look, I, I need one really bad. This is what I do. This is how much cash I've got." And I think I got it for a couple of hundred. Wow. Well, but, I guess if it's been sitting I, there that long and people aren't, then yeah. Really but I have there. to say, it's it's transformed my ability to sit at the desk, and I need it. And um, and it's almost like I'm much more in work mode when I sit. And sometimes I sit on the sofa in the other room and I've got a little table thing yeah. and I do a bit of work there. But really, this is where I work. Yeah, yeah? I'm, I'm the so same. I, really I need like to this. get somewhere to get into a headphones <coughs> that is this and, is and can, can, I, can I segue on to a chair thing? Yeah. Another chair thing. Sure. I mentioned this briefly. Yeah, right. This is true. Chairs. I have in the other room a chair that my partner brought me. It's an Ikea Pignon or something they're called. I can't pronounce words, right? Oh, I can't have such bizarre names oh, for all this. They do. They do. But, it's but like it's, going it's through a, a Norse god list. <laughs> so, so, somebody's going to write in here what it is like, Pignang or something, and I'm terrible. My pronunciation is really bad. So so my, my, my partner bought me this chair as a surprise, and it's 
think about again before the pandemic three years ago, BP, and um, <laughs> it's beautiful. It's everything about it is right. When I sit there, I've got my um, my little uh, chemistry stool with a film can on top is where I put my cups of coffee. I've got my charger for my phone. I can see the rest of the flat. I can see the window. I can see the, the plants I've got. I, I'll have to take a picture of it. Um, it's like that whole thing of Big Bang Theory and Sheldon, that whole... Oh, it is. No, it is. This has is totally to be. where I'm going. <laughs> this is totally where I'm going, right? So it's my chair. I don't say that lightly. It is my chair. Yeah. Right? It's my chair. I now get up in the mornings... And if I'm not here, I sit down there, have coffee, a bit of orange juice, whatever. And it, it, it does that bit where it springs. And I've realized that that's a bit stim for me. Yeah. So I'll sit in it and I'll spring and it's a form of self-regulation for me. So yeah. it's actually, it's a chair. It's a chair for, you know, awesome real cystic tigger. I serve regular in it. It's perfect. It's right. And if I'm stressful, I go straight to the chair. I've realized it's a way of me, you know, bringing myself, my anxiety levels down and so on. Now, um, if she watches this one, I'm done for. So I've been trying to say to my video partner that 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 that's that that's my chair, yeah. And she's like, yeah, no. And I'm thinking, no, you don't get that idea. <laughs> that's this Sheldon bit. Not he's a good example of a neurodivergent individual, but the show is interesting. And I went, yeah, that's my chair. It's been going on for weeks, uh, my, months. It's my chair, so that when somebody else sits in it, I get anxious. Yeah, I get anxious. I get stressed. I get upset. Because when I sit on the sofa, it's not the same from a self-regulatory viewpoint. I need that chair sometimes, especially first thing in the morning, it's part of my morning routine, to, to self-regulate. So it's something I've got used to in terms of structures and, and you know, from a sensory viewpoint, loads of things. And I just couldn't, I just couldn't get it to understand. So I'd even say it's my chair and she'd go and sit in it. And I'd be like, oh, now I have to be honest here. There is one beautiful living entity that does sit in it and will stare at me to make me get out of it and I can't refuse her. And that's Mrs. Pebbles, right? The whip it, right? So Mrs. Pebbles is allowed. That sounds really bad, doesn't it? Mrs. Pebbles is allowed to sit in the chair because she loves it. Yeah. And she thinks it's the best thing ever. And I kind of, so Mrs. Pebbles, she sits in it and she looks beautiful. I take those pictures around it and so on and so forth. But not 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 my partner. It's mine. So the other day I had this flash of inspiration and I went, she's a birder. She does bird watching. She says, I've got to go out. I've got to oxygenate. I've got to look at some birds. I need to do that. She says, I need to do it to be calm some days. I'm like, oh, 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 that's my chair. And as they say, the penny dropped. I said to her, that's my chair. My chair is the same as you going out to see birds, as you going in the back garden, as you yep. watching the birds feeding. I'm drawn to it. I need to do it. It's part of who I am intrinsically. It may look like it's just a chair to so many other people. To me, it isn't. It's part of my daily routine, my yep. self-regulation, my stimming, and so on and so on and so on. And I'm hoping that the penny has dropped. We haven't been back here since, so I don't know. I might do an update. <laughs> um, but um, but she certainly went, God, I hadn't thought of that. And I went, yeah, it's, so it's not just me being Piketty or me being like, it's my flat, it's my chair. It's, it's actually how I relax. It's actually how I reduce aspects of my anxiety. It's actually how I calm down on occasions. It's by just sitting. And sometimes I find myself sitting in the chair and just, just rocking with my eyes shut and going, oh, you know. And, and, and I mean, years ago, going back to Sheldon, I, and I've never watched it all. I've watched bits of it. I watched all the bits of it with Star Trek and stuff like that. And, um, and my daughter said to me, you need to watch this bit. And I went, why? She said, you need to watch this bit. And I went, why? So she put on the bit where he's doing the bit where it's his bit on the sofa. Because I had a bit in the flat when we lived in Truro where the sofa was mine. Yeah. That bit on the sofa. And if anybody sat there, I'd get knocked. And and she went, that's you. And I went, that's not me. This was years ago. I went, that's not me. I said, there's a perfectly logical reason as to why I sit there. The coffee bit's there. <laughs> it's the remote control's there. The speakers are aligned. So when I sit there, I get the best music. But no, it's because that chair and where I, and, and again, I don't know about you. If, if we go somewhere, my partner's now learned that I'll go, I need to sit there. And I'll go, I need to sit in the corner. Is that all right? And I'll say, can I sit in that chair? And her family are realising now, when we go for a Sunday lunch, I always sit in the same chair. And sometimes people sit there for a giggle and I get really upset. Yeah. And they go, oh, go on, Tigger, it's all right. I go, thank you. What I do now is the minute I get this, I put my coat or something on the chair because it's fine, <laughs> I need to sit there. That's why I always sit. Those are my it's routines, those are my structures. You say there about, you, you, you found the reason you were able to reflect that and explain it. There was a test done, like it was scientific experiment sort of thing, but it was talk. they had 
they were using like bank cues or something like that. But they were testing on how people responded when you asked to cut in. Oh. So if you just walk up and go, do you mind if I just step in front of you? People get to the back, you know. what? If they said, do you mind if I step in front of you? I have a meeting to get to in five minutes. Or even, do you mind if I get in front? I'm just in a real hurry. Just the fact that there was a reason behind it meant that the brain of the person could process there's a reason for it. It's not just them being, I don't want to wait, and therefore cutting in. So add, adding a reason, adding uh, yeah. backing something up with that there's a reason for this allows people. So I think often when we do things and we think, you know, like like you're saying, it was that's my chair, but there's no explanation behind it. So people were like, well, what the, it's a chair, you know. I think it's. When you go into the yeah. detail. It, I think sometimes one of the things I get from that that divide is that it's how to explain it in a way that you would understand. Yeah. And I actually find that really difficult, which sounds silly because of my job, but I do sometimes. When it's me, yeah, I, I do, I think. Yeah. When it's other people, I don't, but when it's me, I do. And I think that um, getting that message across sometimes, I think part, part, of it, part of it is sharing my artistic self, which I'm still, you know, I'm still on that journey. And part of it is, is and I will be, this is honest, I think, as well. Uh, which shows you where I am in terms of I've still been affected by the ableist society I live in, yeah. is that I'm a, a little bit ashamed, embarrassed to say I need that chair. I actually yeah. need it. It's not It's not a joke. It's actually need to sit in it. Otherwise, yeah. I get really stressed and really anxious and it can have a huge knock-on effect on my day. Do you mind? Because that's vulnerability, isn't it? It that's is. Like having it's exposing to show yourself, vulnerable. isn't it? Yeah. <clears throat> but you're right. Add in, add in a reason. I think I tried various things that hadn't worked and, and the boom – we just been talking about. Um, she runs a, a, a women's birders group, just some brilliant stuff. And um, we were just talking about. It. I just went, "Oh my god, that's so that is in, is important to you for similarish reasons, not mm. you know, not neurotype, but similarish reasons." And I thought yeah. I, I can make the link here. I can make the link. You then might understand why it's not me being funny or me yeah. being pinicky, if that's a good word or right word. It's me being autistic tigger. I need that chair. I yeah. need it, and this yeah. is why. But it's you're right, the reasons what the, that reason is what I think has made the difference. It doesn't even have to be a sensical reason. And I think that was the thing. It was like, even if they just said, Do you mind if I cut in front? I'm in a real hurry. That, mm. that was the reason. That, and, you know, the percentage of people that were allowing people in front was dramatically higher, basically, that when, when that simple reason was given, even if it wasn't, it wasn't detailed, it was just as simple as, you know, so in it. that situation, look. Part of my neurodivergence is I kind of need that chair. I hope you understand. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. People tend to go, oh, oh, okay. <clears throat> Even if they don't understand why, you know, and they might be sitting there in their heads going, "What? Why does the chair matter?" But, but just the fact that that reason's given allows people to process in different ways. It's fascinating stuff. I'll try and find the I think it's, study and I'll yeah, put it in the I think it's, it's I really hard it. sometimes across the neurotypes is that so many people who live it, like yourself, you know, and, and others I know. Um, that that bridging, jumping that gap, jumping that gap is a little bit easier. For some of the people, you know, you try and speak to, they just don't get it because it yep. is so alien to their thought processes. That's it's it. so different to how their everyday method of thinking because it's a different neurotype. And it is like, you know, and it is, you can see people going, no, I don't get it. That's really silly. Don't, don't get it at all. For a variety of things, when a, a, you know, when a neurodivergent individual is trying to explain their, their needs around routine structures, sensory, stimming, masking, whatever, and they just don't get it. It's, I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say the masking one. Yeah, it's, it's been like eight phone calls this week already, yeah? But he or she or they, they're not like that at school. Do you know what I mean? So no, I'm I, don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I know, I know. I'm we're, sorry. We're, we're going to go break. back down a path. I know. I know. But it's again, just, it drives me. I know. Nuts. And you just think it's just that, that, okay, okay, we've gone training is a problem. But it's that complete and utter lack of like, I don't understand it. And it's thinking it's, it's, it's a neurotype. It's, it's that person's, you know, it's that awesome person and That's what it. is going on. But it's all about the fact that, you know, it's 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 finding ways for me. And this is just me personally. I, yeah. I read stuff. Obviously, I've got great um, um, my neurokin is superb and so on. Of I've, I've getting that information across because at the end of the day, that across you know across the new divide, it is a really difficult bridge to gap sometimes yeah. because you are dealing with it with somebody unless they've got good experience, will find it really difficult to make that jump. And that's where. Think, Exactly yeah. why we do this podcast. Exactly yes. why 
we talk about this stuff. There is a responsibility from us as neurotypicals, and it's something I've learned too late in life, sadly. But there is that responsibility to meet people halfway. And I, I think yeah. a lot of the time it's like, well, well, I, I try to imagine it if you were, if you had your liberties taken away, and that's kind of what it's like. We live in a world that's very adapted to the neurotypical mind because there's a predominance there. It's a natural thing that occurs. Yeah. We also live in a world that's very aware now of different types of people, different kinds of diversities, be that racial, sexual, you know, uh, whatever. We have this very diverse society and we're proud of that. But we're not, and this is that ableist society that Patika keeps referring to, where we haven't adapted because all that, all that other stuff doesn't take money. It just takes a change of heart, a change of mind. Change and, respect, and it's empathy. Such, exactly. Or, when know. it comes to disability, when it comes to well, be it hidden disability, be it overt disability, be it just a difference in neurotype, because I don't think that's always a disability. In some cases it can be. There's that lovely quote by Luke Bearden, which is 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 something like something I'm paraphrasing. My apologies. Is is uh, being autistic is not necessarily dis disabling. There are IQ factors there and so on. Being autistic is not necessarily disabling, but are we disabled because of the environment we're in? Yeah, we are. That's it. That, that, that's it's, perfect. It's, 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 sorry, it's are we disabled? That, we are we disadvantaged because of the environment we're in. We're definitely disadvantaged because the environment we're in. Because the environment wants everybody to be the same. You know, it. school, education, shops everything everything the same and that's where it's you know i, mean, I think I, somebody quoted me the other week one in seven individuals are neurodivergent and even then they were thinking that was out of date and i can't remember the source of that my apologies but you know you, you think then you know wow but it's, it's you know this is why this is good because people get to hear two young men <laughs> <laughs> discussing I, it's, it's so important and it's so I, it, it is that side of it that i love but i also think it, it's it's that part i really want to get across it's our responsibility to be making sure and yes it costs more than just a change of heart there are physical adaptations that often need to be made but these are the little things that don't cost being able to just go okay that person is neurodivergent they might need that chair and not making a fuss of it Having that understanding or, is, is something even, so simple. Of, of course, he can have a stimming tool in class. Do you know what I mean? Yes, of exactly. course, he doesn't have to wear. Of course, she doesn't have to wear that blazer because of the sensory issues with the skin. Those she are the adaptations. Have to make eye contact. I don't understand that it doesn't make yeah. it comfortable for her. Those are the free things that don't cost anything. They're not. It's not. You know, I'm not saying the rest doesn't need to happen because I'm 100 percent behind. It really does. Mm. But it's not like putting a ramp into a shop so that there's wheelchair access. These are simple, everyday things that we can all do that make such a huge difference to a substantial part of our community mm. that just hasn't had the voice. I think that's a really good place to wrap it up. Tigger, yeah. I, 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 will, I will say, I do think it's changing, though. I do think because of this, because of the pandemic, chucking everybody online and whatnot, I still have this belief system that so and more individuals now are listening to um to to you know the the, the neurokin and learning people listen to but, neurodivergent individuals but, and this is the bit that you know. gets me on it this is the bit that really bugs me until the pandemic none of this mattered no so neurodivergence had to go into work they had to work in an office they had to work in environments that were probably prohibitive and stress inducing and mental mm. health affecting for their particular neurotype Pandemic hits, everyone was forced to work from home, and suddenly all these solutions appeared overnight yeah. that were there all along. That was suddenly acceptable. And that's the thing that gets me. Why does it take something to affect the neurotypical world before out it's of, yeah. made yeah. Out, available out norm, for the neurodivergent yeah. world? Yeah. Uh, why does it have to be for the able-bodied before it becomes something that's thought through for the um, but, you know, disabled body? I've, I've got this visual image in my mind of, of, of during the pandemic, it was like, you know, big, big snow area and somebody made a little snowball and pushed it. Yeah. And it's carrying on going down the hill. And yes. I do feel that that it's, you know, families, parents, individuals, neurokin, professional advocates that are joining us. It's, it's the snowball's getting bigger and that's what's happening. And that is, you're right. It took a pandemic to do it, but that snowball is now rolling down that hill. That's and a true. lot of changes have to be made. 
uh, uh, Tigger, thank you so much for, uh, again, joining me for this. I always get so much out of it. Um, yeah, uh, it just really thank opens my mind ever. and really helps. So hopefully it's helping you guys out there too. If it is, I want you to go now and hit like, hit subscribe and ring the bell. And we want to hear from you. Please This do. is a really good part. We did an episode a while back, which was just answering questions that you guys have put forward. It was one of our best episodes. It was really great to hear. And we want to hear your questions. If there's something that you want to get us to delve into and, and have a bit of a chat about, chuck it in the comments. Let us know, and we can do another episode like that. It would be fantastic. So please pop it in there. Even if it's just a thumbs up to say, loving what you're doing, please do it. Tigger, I'll see you on the next episode, and we'll see all you, you guys will. on the next episode. We will. <laughs> stay stay hey. safe, everybody. Don't forget, it's That's PDA nice month. Place. Yeah, so PDA, PDA awareness <laughs> and acceptance. Definitely, definitely, definitely. And, and, and all the stuff you do. Yes. Please, guys, just Honestly. get Absolutely on the PDA brilliant. Society. If you have even some spare change, just chuck it on and, and support what they're doing. One thing I will say about the PDA Society that I really think needs to stand up is that it's run by both neurotypicals and neurodivergence. And as you know from the interview I did with them last uh, episode, uh, back a couple of episodes ago on this channel, I spoke to the CEO, I spoke to uh, Julia Daunt. They're both neurodivergent individuals. And, you know, Helen is the... Yeah, she's brilliant. The, the, the CEO, you know, and it's run by neurodivergent and neurotypical people working together. Exactly it, what we're is, trying to do here. It, it is a fun... I mean, their website is second to none. It is my first point call for information. It is phenomenal. I think I first went to one of their first conferences years ago and try and get to every single one. Second to none. Yep. Superb. Globally. Superb, I tell you. There you go. Fantastic. So. We are. So get behind them, hop on over. And if you want to support them a little bit and get something out of it, head over to the merchandise for the PDA Dad UK, all proceeds. So basically this is set up so that they're the direct payment. So it never comes via me. All proceeds, all profits goes directly to the PDA Society. So it's a great way to give them some support and look stylish in doing so. <laughs> we shall Gosh. see you guys on the next episode. In the meantime, please stay safe.